Hello, hello. Welcome back to another exciting episode of Talking Business with Rich, the show where we dive deep into the minds of industry leaders and uncover the secrets to success. So the show where we aim to humanize entrepreneurship by making business talk fun, simple, and practical. So I'm your host, Ritzel Loretta Rectra, and today's show is nothing short of or extraordinary. So we got a remarkable guest with us, someone who's not just a survivor, but a beacon of unbreakable leadership in both business and life. So get ready for insights that will inspire, motivate, and transform. Now, make sure to drop your questions in the comments and stay tuned for the Q&A segment where we will feature your questions and provide specific answers. So by the way, if you've ever thought about starting your own live stream, we're powered by StreamYard and you can explore this fantastic platform through the link in our video description. So it's been a game changer for me and who knows, it could be the tool that you are looking for and so click the link in the description. All right, Pamban, are you ready to become one with the unbreakable leadership in both business and life? So grab your favorite drink, settle in, and let's kick off the show. Here we go. All right, now. So hello, Pam Pam again. I wish you a blessed and happy day ahead, whether you're driving to work, you're cooking breakfast, or simply relaxing on the couch. May this day showers you with lots of love and fortune. So in the next few minutes, we'll get to know our incredible guest in a way that goes beyond the, bi the bio. So get ready to meet an extraordinary individual who brings a unique blend of resilience, and leadership to our show today. He is not just a leadership and resilience coach. He is also an author and a speaker and a survivor. All right. So his mission, let me just change it. All right. Now his mission, he has a mission to empower CEOs, business owners, and entrepreneurs to overcome challenges and thrive in both personal and professional spheres. So with over 35 years of experience, including navigating the challenges of being a former international hostage, Jose Pereira is here to share invaluable insights and lessons that can truly inspire us all. So ladies and gentlemen, um, Let's warmly welcome Jose Pereira to Talking Business with Ritz. Hello, how are you? How are you? Hi. All right, now, yeah, Jose, we are thrilled to have you here on the show. How's your day doing? Yeah, it's going good, going good. Yes, this is beginning, it's early in the morning here in Houston. All right. Good morning, then. <laughs> All right, so and now it's it's time to discover the person behind the title. So let's get to know our guest in a deeper level. Are you ready, uh, Jose? Yeah, ready. All right, here we go. Um, so let's start with the first question. I'm going to change the uh, layout of the screen so that you are the only one showing. I'll be at the bottom left, so don't, um, you know. Yeah, I'll be there. All right, so let's start the first question. Um, who is Jose uh, Pereira on a personal level? Well, first of all, thank you for having me. Uh, I'm a guy that I did a long career in the oil and gas, as you did said in the introduction. I worked 35 years in the oil and gas. I began working in the oil and gas in Venezuela. I'm a Venezuelan American, but I began... Uh, uh, working in, in, in the PDVSA, that is the oil and gas in Venezuela. And uh -huh. 15 years after I came here to Houston, uh, to the to the uh, US-based affiliated that is Citgo Petroleum, where I finalized my career being uh -huh. CEO of that company. So that, that's basically my, my my professional background. So as a personal person, as in, in person, in person, 
Uh, who is Jose? I, I, I'm a father. I, I'm of three kids. I'm a, I'm a grandfather of three grandkids. Wow. I have a long-term marriage, 38 years with my wife. And 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 today I'm a strong advocate for the hostage community. I'm going to say why. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and I'm a people guy. I'm a people guy. All right. Now, could you briefly let us know how did your path begin as a coach, you know, specializing in leadership and resilience? Well, basically, because uh, as I said, uh, I went to this very traumatic situation when I became hostage in 2017 in my mm -hmm. home situation after five years. I came back in October 2022. So when I, when I came back, I decided to pivot my, my career because I switched from the corporate world and I decided mm -hmm. to combine the two experiences that I had a with my long-term leadership experience and my survivor experience that really was a resilience experience. And I, because I discovered that two things, that leadership and, and resilience are so tight that that's why I decided to begin to teach and, and coach in that area. All right. Okay, now, um, so we now, you know, I love hearing my guests' origin story that had helped shape who they are today. So now let's go or let's uh, get to know Jose on a more personal level. So are you ready for the lightning round of fun question? Go ahead. All right, here we go. I'm back. What is your favorite word and why? My favorite word? Yes. Hope. Hope. Why? Well, because that, that is everything. Hope is the base of everything. Having hope, you can have everything. All right. Now, are you a morning person or a night owl? No, I'm a morning person. Always. I, I, I Because let me tell you something. The oil and gas is so challenging that you always have to be very early. I, mm -hmm. I, I, all my life, I was like a 5 a.m. guy because wow. we have a meeting at 6 a.m. So my life, my brain is trained to be awake very early in the morning. All right. Understandable. Now, what is your uh, favorite book that changed your life? Man in the Search of a Meaning from Victor Franco. That There's changed. You. Okay. I'm going to look for that book as well. No, no. You have to read it. Uh, let me tell you to the audience. I wrote that, I read that book during my captivity and that really was a life changer. This guy was a survivor during the concentration camp and uh -huh. he was talking that the survivor of the Nazi camp survived because they found their purpose in their life. So everybody has to read that book in their life. Understood. Now, next question. One thing on your bucket list yet to be checked. One thing in my bucket list to be checked. Wow, that's a very nice question. I never thought about that. Well, uh, I, I believe that what today I'm doing, I want to get the more stages as possible. So I really want to be in front of thousands of people. All right. Now, next question. What is your favorite childhood memory? Oh well, you know, I grew up in a, in a, in a, in a, in Venezuela in a mm -hmm. oil field because my father also was an oil worker. So we grew up in an oil field called San Tomé that was was uh, uh, ruled by by the American company, the Gulf Oil. So my memory was really nice because we grew up like a, a very uh, very American environment, you know. Uh, so so it was really cool by my, my childhood, yeah. All right, that is nice. Now, um, what is your secret talent that nobody, not much people know? My secret talent, you know, uh, well, I, I love to sing. <laughs> I love to sing. <laughs> Ooh. Can I request for a line or two? <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, I did it my way. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> now, that was nice. Now, uh, what is your uh, favorite way to distress? 
going to the movies. I love to go to the movies. I'm a big fan of DC and Marvel, so I enjoy a lot going oh, to the movies. Young at heart. All right. Now, um, uh, what is the best piece of advice you've ever received? Well, never give up. And today, that is my motto. Never give up. Yes. All right. Now, um, what is the one word to describe your coaching style? I'm a people guy. I'm a people guy. All right. Now, in three words, how would your friends describe you? I'm a people guy. I always have been a people guy. That, that is my description. I'm a people guy. All right, then. Last question. What advice would you give your younger self? Well, that pursue your dreams and never give up in your dreams. All right. That's awesome. Now, a big thank you for to you, uh, Jose, for sharing those fantastic, fantastic insight in your personal life. All right. Now, um, so it's time to the next part of our show, which is the Learn from the Expert segment. But before we jump into that, uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you're enjoying the show, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. We are in YouTube. So just search on at Bristol Rectra. And to our live audience, please keep those questions coming for the Q&A session later. All right, now let's keep the momentum going. Time to unlock more wisdom from Jose Pereira. We'll be right back. Okay, welcome back, amazing fan bumps, to Talking Business with Ritz. Grab your pens and notebooks because you won't want to miss these game-changing strategies here in the Learn from the Experts segment. Now that we had the pleasure of getting to know Jose, um, with his unique experiences, he is here to guide us through the essential aspects of cultivating resilience in the face of challenges. So let's dive into our first topic. Let me just flash that topic right now. So our first topic, and I'm going to change the layout. Our first topic is uh, survivor's mindset, building resilience in business. So I understand that you were part of the Sitgo 6. So I was just reading about it earlier. So I can't imagine what your wife, Mrs. Mervis, actually uh, felt during that captivity and anxiety felt by your, uh, by your families and the rest of the families for the other five. So drawing from this unique experience, can you share a defining moment that shaped your survivor's mindset and how it influences your coaching approach? Well, this is very important, your question, because uh, it, during our captivity, we had the, our first year was really dark. Was mm -hmm. really, we went through a lot of situations. I'm not going to enter here in detail, but the, the audience can imagine the worst thing ever. That was us. So, so, but after one year, uh, uh, for the, all the pressure that the family was doing, they decided to, to put us together because we were all separated. We were six mm -hmm. guys, all separated and all isolated. So when they put us together and they give us my first call to my family, that for me was a game changer. Because for, for the first time, we got together, the six and, and, and begin to get connected to the families. So this is something very important and key in any situation that you're going in your life, have that connection, have that mm -hmm. connection. Because a, a, that, that can be in your life or in your business. So anything that you're going in, in your life, you need to be surrounded for the people and the key people that can help you. So that that's so key. And this is part of the resilience because if you are a business owner or, or a CEO or, or entrepreneur or the, and you're in front of a company that today world is 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 a, is, is a challenge. Yeah. So, so how can you do this alone? You need to be surrounded with good people that can give you good advice because one of the most key things in, in a leader, you have mm. to have self-awareness that he has a strength, but at the same time has weakness. He doesn't know all the answers. So the only way is to be surrounded with good people that can support you. So that, that's part of the resilience. All right. Now, many of our viewers uh, may face challenges in their businesses, right? So what key strategies or mindset shifts uh, can you recommend helping them connect 
or helping them build resilience, especially in times of crisis? Well, one of the first thing is always in any situation you have to be calm. The first thing is be focused in the situation. Well, mm -hmm. sometimes when, when you're going with a, 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 a situation in your business or in your life, uh, and you lose the focus because you get so, so troubled and so uh, depressed or so anxious with the situation you're going. So you lose the focus. So the first thing you have to chill down, calm down and be focused because when you get focused, you can see the things more clear. And, and, and then you can uh, put together, uh, separate the things that you can control and the things that you cannot control. The things that you can control, you begin to you can begin to uh, uh, work them. And the, the, the one that you cannot control, even that you cannot control, now you are more conscious about the situation. So you can you can see more clear the things. Be positive, even in the dark moment. Be positive. Uh, this is a, something that I can tell it from my personal experience i'm a life testament of that that even in the dark moment i always was positive so being positive is so important because it's is 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 a so personal choice but it's so key when you decided to see the things in a positive way because because when you see the things in a positive way you see the things different as i said first get connected to the people that support you the, mm -hmm. the, or, 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 or your connections or uh, in your business it, it's going to be your peers it's going to be your employees or, get get uh, take care of your mental and physical health this is so important because sometimes a business owner has to have so much challenge they get so much depressed so much answer and lose the, the 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 sense that they they need to take care of or the, of his and his employees a health, the mental and physical health, so important, so important. And 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 the most important of things, connect to your spirituality. The, this is something that the the the, the people lo sometimes lose the 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 sense that you need to get connection to your spirituality. But this is really this is the only way that things are gonna work. I, and today, I'm a I'm a I'm a God believer. I understand that people can believe in uh, another. Uh, yes. Higher power, mm -hmm. I respect that. But in my case, I'm a, I'm a true God believer, and I believe that any business and any uh, 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 entrepreneur that wants to be successful has to get connected to that superior superiority. Because only with the grace of God is that you're gonna be prosper and abundant. I agree. I agree. So, um, if we chill out, right? If we cool down, right? Um, sometimes the solution might just present itself even if you are like in panic sometimes, yeah sometimes you have yeah. it in front and you don't see it yes true that okay now let's acknowledge uh, uh, one of the viewer live viewers today um this is michael baker <laughs> it's not showing your name is not showing michael all right so thank you for watching with us now and yes he agrees self-care as what um yeah and he also mentioned uh, biblical principles are meant to be practiced. Yes, right. biblical. that's it. That's it, my friend. Yes, I agree with you. All right. Now let's go. Let's move on. So, um, so uh, for those, where am I? All right. So for those uh, tuning in, uh, wondering how to, you know, apply resilience in their uh, daily business struggles. So uh, aside from what you mentioned, what practical steps or habits can they uh, incorporate starting today? Well, as, as I said, one of the things, uh, uh, do do a daily practice of, of uh, uh, you know, meditation. You can do yoga. You can walk. Some people, for example, I I, I love my dogs. I, I, I walk my dogs very early in the morning. And for me, that's really great. You know, today, today that I, I went to my uh, situation i can yeah. see more more clear all those small things in the life that sometimes you lose the the, the sense that you know breathing a fresh air have having a morning walk going with your dogs that, that is so cool for me today i enjoy it a lot so this is that type of thing that enjoy your life try to have fun 
sometimes we 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 lose the, the the sense that it's not only working 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 let me tell you i got the experience i got the experience that i was a workaholic in, in the past i was a guy working 20 hours a, 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 a day a, a, a seven seven days a week a, always traveling almost lost my family and 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 that doesn't work. You need to get, have that perfect balance with life and, 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 and work. So be, have that balance. That, that's so important. And that will help you in your, in your resilience. All right. Fantastic insight, Jose. Um, I myself also is like a workaholic <laughs> in a sense because I still work in corporate. And now I'm taking care of my my business <laughs> and this show so yeah i love i love helping people and trying to elevate them and to give them a platform like this one so that uh, people will hear them people will hear their story more and yeah so now i'm going to segue to the next one let's talk about another aspect of your journey jose moving on to the next topic which is um leadership in crisis uh, lessons from a former hostage. Um, so transitioning from resilience to leadership, can you share how your experience as a former uh, international hostage has shaped your approach to leadership? Well, this is uh, so key because I, I in, in my previous life, when I was in, in the corporate, I always was really having a lot of uh, challenge in my leadership. Because, uh, uh, Anybody that knows the oil and gas knows there is a challenge. But the most important challenge in my life was my hostage situation. Because we went through so much situation that you needed to be adaptive. That's that's key. Any leader has to be adaptive. Adaptability is key in, in leadership. Why? Because things can be changing minute by minute. So the only way you can be on top of the thing is being adaptive. How you can be adaptive? Having the mindset to get that, to be adapted, and again, having people backing you, having people supporting you, because you cannot navigate this alone. So, so mm -hmm. part, of, part, part of the leadership is that I I learned to, during my activity because we were five guys plus me, and we were in a very tiny room. Can you imagine that that that? And we were always, we created strong bonds. We were always having that as a, as a statement that anything that was going on, we needed to solve it immediately. Never mm. things go, uh, 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 neither the other day, solve it immediately. And if somebody needed to ask for pardon, ask for pardon this is something that is key in, in, in any business sometimes people don't talk about friction there are in the workplace and uh. and, and it began to evolve 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 and and and, and it ruins the, the the you know the, the 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 environment in the workplace we also did something we were always cheering each other uh, if somebody for some reason was down the other came and step step in and to to lift up this is something that you have to do in your business too. Because w when you're in a leadership position, remember the people that are there are people. They're human beings. They, yeah. they have, yes. And maybe you have a, one of your best leaders uh, in, in your team. And sometimes that guy can be down. He, he can be having a problem in his, in, 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 his, in his family. So if you're a good leader, you, you have to know what's going on with the person. And that, that, that is part of the, the, the key in being a leader. Be empathic with people. Be empathic, understanding what, what, what the people are feeling. And, and this is the way that people will connect with you. Leading by example. Leading by example. So, so uh, there's, and, and, be, and be the model. You have to be the model. You have to not, not only lead by example, be the model. You, because you cannot be uh, 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 say something, but, but you don't practice it. And, and, and have a strong communication skills. Communication doesn't mean that you're going to be talking. You have to be hearing to the people. You have to listen. Because yeah. sometimes people think that communication is I saying that thing to my <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Now, you, leaders, from what I'm, I'm, I'm hearing from you, leaders um, have to be adaptive 
proact and have a proactive mindset and to prioritize the effective uh, communication by not only talking and uh, you have to listen as well um, to what is happening with your people or the mm -hmm. people around you mm -hmm. yes all right now so as our viewers absorb these lessons um let's let's explore the uh, third topic but let let us um oh there are some comments okay it's the same ah this uh, michael baker says focusing on the process he's saying a lot <laughs> focusing on the process to improve one's performance yeah 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 Very All right. cool. yeah quality efficiency is effective yes mm -hmm. all right and then uh set the example be the inspiration correct be the model be the model, be the, mo the model. Exactly. I, I always do the example of the movie braveheart you know braveheart oh, was, I watched that. he was always in the front row of the battlefield he was yes. leading by example you know he was in the front row you know yes all right and then uh inspiration leads to aspiration uh connection and unity thank you very much michael all right now let's let's uh, continue with the uh, third topic which is um here we go thriving beyond adversity personal and professional growth so um you know Jose, what can individuals and businesses learn from your journey about overcoming adversity and achieving growth? Well, this is important. You know, I'm going to say something. Uh, when I came back, I, I, uh, I'm not going to say that I was totally okay because I went through this very mm -hmm. traumatic situation. So yeah. I had, I, I went to, a, a, I was a, in a military base through a process that, that, that is the same that they apply to the prisoner of war and missing in action. I went to mm -hmm. the you know, the program is called Pizza. It's a decompression program. I went to a national trauma center. So when I came to discover all the how the trauma and how the healing process came, and I decided to begin to talk about this. And and by the way, I'm today a big advocate for the hostage uh, situation here in the US. So and and I I'm beginning I began to have a, a weekly therapies. I, I still have my therapies. And, yeah. and Funny because now my therapist is my friend. Yesterday I did an audio room with her in in, in LinkedIn. So now I'm coaching her. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's great. <laughs> Coach, mentor. <laughs> so, but, 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 yeah, she helped me a lot because um, uh, that is part of your your personal growth. That the the, the things that you have gone. Don't look at as failures. Look, look at bounce back and look at as opportunities. So I, I discovered because again I'm today very connected to, to, to my my church and I do church service. So and I connected with my pastor. So I, I discovered that the, for some reason God put me in this path, and for some reason now today I decided to, you know, to to teach and to coach other and to explain this and to speak about this and help even my, my hosted community and, 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 and the business owners that these things, anything in your life, you can survive it. And anything in, in, in your business, you can overcome it. Even in your life, even in your business, it can be done. And if for some reason you have, have some failure, don't look at this failure. Look at, look at those opportunities to grow. Always have have the mindset that everything is opportunity to grow in your personal life or in your business. I love that. All right, now no, let's let's tie it all together. So, how can businesses create a culture that not only supports professionals during challenging times but also promotes continuous growth and development? Be because part of the culture that a leader has to have is this is unlocking the potential of, 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 of their employees. Mm. Well, one of the things that, that sometimes a leader forget that he has to unlock the potential of their, their peers and their employees. How? Mm. Well, you know, uh, training them, uh, promoting them, challenging them, mm. challenging them, uh, 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 giving them superior roles, maybe a replacement substitutions, a, a coaching them, mentoring them, the, a, all, all these things, because sometimes people think there had to be always big investment 
And yeah, if you're a company that had money to invest, you have budget to invest in training, it's okay. But if you don't, if you don't have too much money, you're a small business, you don't you can you can have ways to train people. You can have an in-house training, and, mm -hmm. and again, having the, the giving the, the opportunity. People need to have the opportunity to grow, because when when your employees grow, you grow. So this, 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 every time they they are growing, you are growing. So this, this, this sometimes people forget that. Right. That is a very mind blowing uh, um, insights or advice from you. So what an incredible uh, conversation this one is. All right. Now. All right. We are transitioning. I have. I have actually a couple of questions I've collected. I have two questions that I have collected. I wonder if Michael, <laughs> who is view, who is with us right now, have some questions. You can type your questions, Mike, uh, so um, Jose can answer. But for now, I'm going to show the, um, I'm going to segue to the question and answer. Let me just do the uh, segment intro. All right. <laughs> All right, so we have a couple of questions here. Uh, one of them is, uh, let me just show it right now. Here we go. Okay, so there is a question. Um, how do I develop a survivor's mindset in everyday life, especially when facing challenges at work? Well, as I was saying, there are several things that you have to do. The first thing that you have to do is be focusing on the situation you, you, you're having. Is because when you get focused, you can see that the 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 big or the small the situation can be. Sometimes remember that the mind plays at games. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. we see the problem bigger than the, than they are. That's the first thing. So you need to be focused and, and calm in the situation. Once you get focused, you can see what you can control, what you cannot control. Yeah. Once you do that, okay, now you have how you're gonna uh, tackle the situation. Then comes having a positive mindset. You need to have a positive mindset, even in the dark moment. My friend, never say that it cannot be done because I did it. <laughs> if I did it, everybody can do it, okay? Yes. So I'm a life testament that you can do it, okay? So, that, that, oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> I, what is that? I don't know. <laughs> because you did it, you're a superstar. <laughs> uh, well, okay. Uh, the third thing is never navigate things alone. A any situation that you're having in your life, never navigate it alone. Again, people sometimes say, well, but you know, I don't have nobody. I'm alone here. Uh, I'm, I'm having issues with my family, whatever. You will always find support. And if you don't have people, have a pet. Have a pet and go with your pet. And if not, go to your church. Look for, but look for your support. Take care of your mental and physical health. This is something so key because sometimes people, when they're having some problems in their mm -hmm. life, so they, yeah. they have health. So they don't take care of their mental and their physical health. You have to take care of Go outside, have walking, have yoga, have meditation, take care of your or, 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 or your body, ha, try to have fun, go to the movie, read a read a book, whatever, play, play a guitar, whatever, and and get connected to your spirituality. So important. People sometimes lose that. You need to get connected to your spirituality, whoever you believe, whoever you believe. So these things, if you do it. Believe it, my friend, that you will overcome any situation in your life. Even in the worst moment, you will overcome it. Wow, that's nice. I believe uh, the next question you've already answered, but if you have additional uh, information or additional answer, that would be nice. So the question is, what advice do you have for someone who feels overwhelmed by leadership, responsibilities, and is struggling to maintain balance? I believe you've answered some yeah. of them, but yeah, if you answer <laughs> I'm going to re-answer that. All right. You feel overwhelmed of leadership. Think, are you maybe micromanaging? Because 
sometimes either time to be overwhelmed because micromanage want to have control of everything you need to delegate a good leader is a good delegator if not tell mark zuckerberg or <laughs> Elon Musk how they go in to play golf because they delegate they have people you know that so that is one of the things that a good leader does delegate you delegate with control you have the control but but you delegate all right there was sometimes um the, the misconception of um as i've said i'm also in the uh in the corporate world so i'm a team leader in the in the enhancement um, um, department all right in the it so sometimes they look at you as somebody who knows all the answers you know <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yes. So that is the misconceptions nowadays with the with your members or with your employees. Or with they put a lot of responsibility in your show. Correct. Correct. So it's like, oh my God, then what what will I do now? <laughs> so I'm leading you, right? And I'm doing all the things that you thought I already know. <laughs> so there's the overwhelm. So your advice is is to to delegate. So probably um let them learn right let them give them time to learn train them with that particular um a lot their potential potential mm. you you have people there that maybe have the potential sometimes leader you know i, I, I have the, the the problem the, the mindset that they think mm. that they're gonna if they're unlocking the potential that is gonna be the you know the uh, end the, of their career <laughs> Because they will replace that's them. Not true. That's not true. That's not true. I can tell. I can tell you in because I experienced in, in in my corporate life that when I had a good team that they they shined, I I I, I shined brighter. So I did my career that way. I always was growing in my career because I had good teams backing me all the time. And let me tell you, when I came back after after my five years. Hmm. Most of the people that have worked with me, because I I develop friendship. Today I'm I'm in some WhatsApp group of people that worked with me 30 years ago. 30. Wow. Years. I'm I'm in a WhatsApp group that I was assigned to a joint venture with a Japanese company 30 years ago, and we have a WhatsApp group, and I'm I chat with them. 30 years ago, we still are friends. That's because awesome. This is that that the thing when when you create this type of good relationship. Your workplace, they at the, at the end, they become kind of part of your family. That's awesome. That's great. So I believe that that is the uh, question that I have. Unless Michael, okay, Michael don't have. So let's move on. So this is a huge thank you, Jose, for sharing your incredible journey and uh, your insights on building resilience, leadership in crisis, and achieving personal and professional growth so it's truly inspiring so let's shift gears to our third um uh, to our third segment for the show all right so let's shift gears and we will talk about how our audience can benefit from our uh, from your expertise so stay tuned for the next segment which is <laughs> All right, now, um, welcome again, fantastic uh, Pam Bams. Uh, what an insightful segment we just had. So here are my key takeaways from the discussion with Jose Pereira, so for Survivor's mindset, that mind, mind, Mindset. So building resilience in business is very crucial. Uh, Jose's journey from a former international hostage to a leadership and resilience coach <laughs> had highlighted the importance of cultivating a survivor's mindset. So in leadership and crisis, uh, lessons from adversity provide a very invaluable um, um, lesson for leadership during challenging times. So Jose experience in handling crisis situations emphasizes that um, you have to have a positive mindset and you have to be in the now, all right, to be able to uh, adapt uh, immediately as to what is going to happen and what is actually happening so you can provide solutions or find solutions immediately. So in thriving beyond adversity, personal and professional growth can um, emerge from even the toughest situations as what happened with Jose. 
I don't want to be in that kind of situation. I don't think I can manage that well, as Jose said it. Um, so Jose's mission is to help clients find their unbreakable spirit, showcase uh, that showcases the potential for um, growth beyond adversity. So everybody remember these uh, takeaways are just the tip of the iceberg. It's not just about absorbing the information, but actually implementing them in our lives. So let's strive to progress and not perfection. All right, so let's move forward with the work with the expert segment to discover how can our audience actually benefit from Jose Pereira's expertise. Okay, now, um, Jose, can you tell us about the offerings or services you provide as a leadership and resilience coach? So the stage is yours. Okay. Well, first of all, you said that you will not manage the situation. That's not true. <laughs> Everybody has that. I can't imagine right now. No, no, I can tell you that that, that human spirit. It, 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 we we have we are creation of God. So everybody has that inside. So some for some reason you don't on top it. But when you go through this extreme situation, believe me, sometimes you will do things that you cannot imagine. That is something that today I coach. How you can on top unleash that unbreakable spirit. I have my coaching program that is called Life Pills for a Survival mm -hmm. Guide, LPSG. That is basically what we have been talking today is basically the the, the fundamental of my program. So I have my webpage is www.joseconet.com. I have my link tree and, and in my link tree or in my webpage or 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 uh, uh, you can uh, book uh, uh, in my calendar call. We can have a 30 minute free call. You can talk to me about your situation. And, and because my, my coaching is very tailor made. I I, I I, I, you can go in my LinkedIn. You will find in the top of my LinkedIn. You will you can book the call there. Okay, my coaching is very very uh, uh, one on one. I tailor made it. I don't do massive sessions. I I I like to work person to person. Okay. Sometimes I do it in, in person here in Houston. Sometimes I do it in Zoom all over the world. So this is the way I tailor made my coaching. So if you want, you can contact me there. The other thing that I do is I speak about this. I, I have a speech called From Captivity to Freedom, Embracing Resilience with the Faith, the Hope, and the Love. Because this is exactly what we have been talking today here. So if you have a, any event or you want me to go to your business to inspire your employees, I'm the guy. Because I have walked the walk, I have talked the talk. Okay, that's yes, I, I can... And I also I I I I wrote my book. It's gonna be out like in three weeks, and it's basically about what we've been, been talking here, my experience and my legacy. And my legacy is what I'm telling today here to the audience that anything in your life you can overcome it. So because I'm a life testament that thing can be done. By the way, uh, Lorena, I want to say here that today. Mm -hmm. Is a, a, that this event is live today? Is a is a great moment for me because today the U.S. Congress approved today as the official hostage and run for the day, the ten day here in the U.S. And today all the federal bureau will raise the flag that my family was part of the creation of that flag, and 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 it's a big deal because besides. Mm -hmm of war and missing in action flag this is the second flag that was approved in all the history of the u.s and 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 and, and my family was part of that movement and, and i'm part of that movement today so i'm very proud that that that, that, that situation is happening today so um for me anything that you need you can I, i'm a people guy i'm a people guy so i can help you all right so um if you are resonated, uh, if you resonated with Jose's, my fan bam, right? Uh, if you resonated with Jose's wisdom and are ready to take the next step, don't miss this opportunity to work with him. So you visit www.joseconnect.com. All right, that is his website. And uh, you visit his LinkedIn. Um, uh, the handle is jose-angel-pereira. 
All and right, now. I, I do a, a, a weekly a, a newsletter that you can subscribe free that is called Building Resilience. Wow. Uh, I, do, I do videos, I do tutorials, I, I do master classes, I do la, live audio events. I did one yesterday night uh, mm -hmm. with, with, with my therapist that was beyond the trauma. It can be resolved. So, so it was a very nice room. My therapist is talking about how you can solve traumas in your life. So this is part of the thing that today I try to, to, to you know, to educate people. All right. Okay. I encourage you to reflect on the wisdom shared by Jose Pereira. Remember, your unbreakable spirit is your greatest asset. So it, that's wrap wraps up uh, another incredible episode of Talking Business with Red. So this is a very, very incredible conversation <laughs> that we just had. So I want to express my deepest gratitude to you, uh, Jose Pereira, for sharing his, your, your journey, your insights, and expertise with us today. So it's been an honor having you on the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. All right, ladies and gentlemen, stay with us, uh, Jose. Ladies and gentlemen, Jose Pereira. Okay, thank you, my fam bam, for joining us today. Um, next on Talking Business with Rich, our guests, uh, expert speaker is a master in sales. Let me just plug the next show. Uh, is a master in uh, sales and client acquisition. Uh, she will be talking about selling skills for women in sales. So it is going to be another epic conversation. So join us again next week where we continue to bring you engaging conversation with experts who empower and inspire just like our guest uh, expert today, um, Jose. All right. Now, this is until next time. Stay resilient, everybody. Uh, stay inspired and keep uh, thriving. This is Ritzel Loretta Rectra and our expert guest, Jose Pereira. Um, stay safe and healthy, and let's continue talking business with Ritz. Bye, everyone. Bye.